but it's a sport that I wish I was better at. Mm -hmm. uh oh. <gasps> I was gonna ask you about the lamp and <laughs> whose exciting. bright idea was that? I like that you said <laughs> bright idea. The pun Let's is see. funny. That's better. At least <laughs> it's not leaning now. Was it leaning before? Oh yeah. Oh. Well, it had just, a list to it. That's a little. That's. It got brighter. It a, did. It's probably a three. -way. That's kind of nice. Oh well, that light bulb's done. Was that an ambiance light? Or? It was. Well, I mean, it'll it be helps fine now. Fill the, it'll fill the fill, fill the, the room. space. Yeah. But now it's just a little. It, I like that moving. blooper. Yeah. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> That'll be good. We'll leave that in. When lights fall. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Kirkpatrick. And my name is Ty Whitman. And we're the hosts of the Beyond the Narthex podcast. A show where we sit down with members of CK Press and go beyond our narthex and take a deeper dive into the lives of our church family. Our hope is that each episode will cultivate and encourage new conversations for you, our listeners, with our guests. Enjoy the episode. Well, we're here with Kathy Lockwood, and I noticed that your email is is a golfing girl, mm -hmm. golfing girl, and I understand both you and Ernie are big fans of golf. Maybe that's an understatement, but can you explain like your connection to golf, and maybe some people didn't know that you were so... Yeah, well, it's probably an overstatement as far as, at this point in my life, being connected to golf, because probably ever since COVID... Mm. Oh, or actually okay. a summer before COVID when my uncle died, I had been ramping up, ramping up, doing things, going out on my own. And then I had, I was blessed to be able to be with my uncle in his final days. And life just got unexpectedly busy in a different direction. Mm. And then that was 19. And then 2020 came COVID. And... I've just kind of pulled away from golf, I think. Mm. And I've talked with other people. COVID kind of drew me in. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I was thinking the other day, it's almost like, what, what happened? I mean, because mm. it's hard to really go back and, I guess, remember life at that time because yeah. it was so different, yet mm -hmm. it's hard for me almost to remember the differences. Anyway, golf has really gone on the other side. My handicap's up. My frequency of golf is much less. Um, and for the most part, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it really doesn't matter. It's like with anything, what you miss is the activity, um, the people, being outside. But other things replace it. So when I created my password to Golfing Girl... 65 obviously it was 10 years ago when i was 65 <laughs> i needed to get a new password so i just you know you try your name things and somebody else had it so oh yeah yeah i golfed and could have been golfing girl or cat mom but i yeah. just did golfing girl oh, and my it. age was 65 so that's how i got that hmm. it resonates with me whenever i email you because i'm like oh it reminds me of when i was in high school tennis was everything and i was like Tennis Girl 316. Wow. So had a variety. Well, and then there was my AIM account. I think I've shared this with you, Ty, where it was, I was a Radical Faith 316. Oh. So there were a lot of 316s yeah. in my early bringing oh, teen life. that's John? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah, very clever. But yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you pick what you're interested in. So yes. whether it's Tennis Chick, Tennis Girl, or Golfing Girl. Yeah. I oh, that. and I, I took <laughs> golf in high school. Oh, I was terrible. Oh, she said, oh, I guarantee everybody's going to break, you know, 50 on the first nine, yeah. part three, nine hole. We go. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, it was um, terrible. Yeah, when I was, when I, I was, I thought about joining the high school golf club or team. And, but I talked to the coach and I was like, I'm really not good. And he said, the only way you won't make the team is if you shoot like 140 on on an 18 or if you break a club on the course like on purpose like you out of anger he's oh. like other than that everybody makes a team That's and it'll fun. just be good for you to get better and i never but i did but i still i was like yeah i i didn't do it i wish i did because i play yeah. golf now oh cool just, yeah well i don't play i'm not i play it once a year 
but it's a sport that I wish I was better at. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. <gasps> I was gonna ask you about the lamp and <laughs> whose exciting. bright idea was that? I like that you said <laughs> bright idea. The pun Let's is see. funny. That's better. At least <laughs> it's not leaning now. Was it leaning before? Oh yeah. Oh. Well, it had just, a list to it. That's a little. That's. It got brighter. Get it me. did. It's probably a three. -way. That's kind of nice. Oh well. That light bulb's done. Was that an ambiance light? Or? It was. Well, I mean, it'll it be fine now. It helps fill the, fill the, fill the, fill the room. space. Yeah. But now it's just a little it, I like that moving. blooper. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> That'll be good. We'll leave that in. When lights fall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, okay. So what's, what is your, I mean, please tell us about Mahjong then. You mentioned oh, golf. Well, it's forgetting out so their community. You're talking, you're talking about my, my, uh, activities that keep me busy yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. mahjong is fun uh, i don't play it on the computer i play it with tiles okay uh with human beings Good. that you sit yeah. around the table mm -hmm. and laugh uh yeah it's fun i first learned mahjong in 1975 um there's many different ways to play it it's not as old of a game as we think it is hmm. um but we play a Kind of a military version because it was created at an Air Force base, right, Patterson? I don't know, Ohio, Illinois, someplace back there. And they have a certain set of rules that they follow. And if you're a military wife and you learn to play it within that system, then that's the method that you play. Mm -hmm. um, there's like the American Mahjong group. They play a different way. Um, a lot of Jewish people play Mahjong. I was at a golf tournament once over in Seattle and was walking through the hallway and I could hear the click, click, click of the tiles and it really is a neat, neat sound. Hmm. Of and the game. I thought the game, yeah, you play with tiles uh -huh. that are really any different size, but they're usually a little bit smaller than a domino. And I thought, oh, Mahjong. So I went into the room and it was this huge room full of women oh that's fun playing mahjong so it's it's a social yeah connected yeah. game and so now i have a thing that we do every monday and you know mondays are pretty sacred until I know somebody's she's here <laughs> <laughs> yes and they're gonna have lunch so i hope to be there by lunch yeah, yeah it's just fun it's a it's a wonderful group and they're fun and we chip at each other and we <laughs> laugh at each other and we cry, yeah. yeah. So it's it's a good thing. And I used to yeah. play bunko, but we don't do bunko anymore. That kind of faded, which is the stupidest game ever invented by a human being. <laughs> but so social. Right? But it's so social and huh. so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever played bunko? I have. Well, and I know I feel like Danny and Patrice are part of a group. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. Are they really? I think they are. Oh wow. Oh, would Danny be fun to play with? Because it's all about like you scream bunko and you move and. I haven't played in years, but uh, yeah. fun. Yeah. And it drives Ernie crazy when a friend of mine screams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> does he play also with you? He does. He's just, he's very, mm. Yeah. And <laughs> she's like, Bongo! But that's what you're supposed to yeah. do. And I tell yeah. people when they come to play, I don't know. I said, can you roll dice? Yes, that's all you have to do. Huh. And react. Everybody yeah, yeah. will count yeah, for fun. you. It Somebody else fun, yeah. will write it down for you. You don't have to do anything. Just roll the dice and move tables when they tell you to. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So it's fun. Yeah. And we like to play card games. We love card games. Um, you know, we don't have a large circle of friends. And when we get together, you don't want to talk about world events. I'm not going to talk economics or, you know, anything like that. We play cards. Nice. And, yeah. you know, like five crowns and... I don't know what else, just learned a spy Joe and hand and foot and sequence. And, and that's yeah, fun. Nice. It's fun. That's good. Yeah. It's fun to do that. Again, social. Yeah. Yeah. yeah do you, is that kind of um, a, a thread in your life of just trying to find those um, social avenues? Are you like, would you say that your whole life you've kind of been, you've been, you've wanted to go do social things, social activities? Or is that a newer thing for you? <sighs> I think it's probably a transitional, it's a phase of life thing. Okay. Uh, I mean, I was always, I guess you were always busy. I was in brownies and Girl Scouts and okay. 
What else did I do? Junior high. Oh, Job's Daughters. Oh, I was in Job's yeah. Daughters. It's a Masonic girls organization. There's Job's Daughters and Rainbow Girls. Oh, okay. And, like service. and Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. then had Dee Malay. And then there's, uh, oh, what are the, Eastern Star and Masons, you know. Okay. Like, so it was a Masonic sponsored group and that okay. was fun. And we did community service and again, it was a social thing and it gave you different activities to do. Mm -hmm. And I was playing in the orchestra at school and I you took did. piano lessons and I was on drill team. And so we did things like that. And then, you know, marrying Ernie and you did social things. Uh, yeah, so we do it. But now it's kind of, you know, then once you're working and full time and stuff, I don't think we did that much. No. Hmm. No. So yeah. Yeah. But again, we don't have a big circle of friends. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So I kind of, I know we, I kind of want to go back to, have you played, so you played golf, you started golf in high school, it sounds like. Yes. And okay. then let it go until I married Ernie. Really? Okay. Yeah. And then did you, so when you say you don't play very often now, what does that mean for you? Well, I rejoined the women's division, but I really like tomorrow I'm not going to go out because I'm okay. going to go see a friend and do stuff. And if okay. something else comes up, I just go you do just it. Go. Mm -hmm. I enjoy going out on the golf course with Ernie. Yeah. We like going out Sunday afternoon, like at two or three o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful in the summertime. Yep. But uh, fun. yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's not. I really like being at home, mm -hmm. taking walks, yeah. knitting, playing with the cat. Talk. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I just like home. Yeah. yeah, and that's something you were saying that was kind of this transformation, like post COVID. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you're not alone in that either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But For it's sure. a it's comfortable, right? It doesn't feel like when you say you like being at home. Like it it's true. Like it's not that you feel confined. You're just you're happy. Like being home is a safe, happy yes. space, right? But I need to get out. Mm -hmm. I need to do things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I do need to push myself to do that. Mm -hmm. To get out to do things. Mm -hmm. Um sometimes it's it's like if I have something in the morning, it's like, wait a minute. No, that's my coffee time. That's my this time. Yeah. That's my, you know. Mm -hmm. I try to be disciplined to do reading of the Bible, but that just, you know, yeah. it's tough. It's hard. It is. Yeah, it is. So yeah. anyway, um, sometimes it's even hard to get up and go to worship service. I always say, mm -hmm. you know, I don't go to church. I go to worship. Yeah. And sometimes that's hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't want it to be hard, but sometimes it's hard to do that. Yeah. Oh, gosh, we ran this habit for a couple of years of just needing to preserve ourselves and our family. And then yeah. to come out of that is like, it takes time. So, yeah. 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 Do you feel, um, well, I have two, but I, I don't know where I want to go because there's two avenues. I have one question that I, that I thought of, but, um, do you ever feel like golf was a place for you where you, um, was, was there any spirit, like spiritual kind of place for you in golf? Like cause gol golf can either be no. the most frustrating sport to play or at the same time, it's like one of those things you're just out and about and you can just kind of, mm -hmm. it's just you and your thoughts or you and your, and, and your husband and, and thoughts and, um, I've always felt, I've sometimes felt like, oh, like this is a great place for me to just kind of be with God. Mm-hmm. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I thought, I do, I think of that, and there's times I'll just stand and stare off, and, I mean, just looking at the world and the creation, and some of you are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm just, you know, it's not that important. Golf mm -hmm. is not yeah. that important. Now, that doesn't mean that I haven't had an anxiety attack. The first place I ever felt like I couldn't breathe, and my throat was constricting was on the golf course now hmm. that's pretty dumb hmm. but because golf was more, yeah, yeah golf was more important yeah. at that point yeah. now hmm. thankfully it's being outside it's yeah. being with nature um it can be spiritual experience it just it just doesn't matter yeah yeah so you what know? is what is the most important then golf's not the most important but something where you're like, this is this is part of my life, and I'm 
this is where I just feel, I guess, feel best or... I don't, you, because you, one thing you asked me about was, and I've had the question presented in other situations, what are you passionate about? The word kind of puts me off because it's like, I don't think I'm really passionate that I know of mm -hmm. about anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I probably am. Sure, yeah. But we can throw the word out then. I yeah, don't, or... yeah, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I can say there's things I enjoy, mm -hmm. but I don't know, you know, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I, I think of activities and stuff. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. You know, I like to read. I'm getting more back into knitting. Mm -hmm. um, I like to cook. Mm -hmm. I like to take walks. You know, we like to travel. Yeah. But I don't think anything is, like, what's your primary focus? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Huh. and I think that's probably a good a good standpoint too. It's like maybe sometimes in our lives we're so fixated, and that then therefore, if someone asks us the question, we could say, "Yes, I'm passionate about X, Y, Z," yeah, because like that's been our focus. But sounds like too, if you are just living life, like I can, that resonates too. I'm, yeah, you appreciate what you have, or you feel fortunate or blessed. But it's maybe passion wouldn't be the first word. Yeah, so. yeah. I know. I there's things I need to be better in, you know, mm. but. Hmm. I'm a work in progress. Yeah. Are we all? Oh, yeah. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is so interesting because um, I think there are a lot of people like that that feel maybe like they they don't get, you know, their gears going on one particular thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I think people feel the pressure and maybe that's why you don't really like the word. Mm -hmm. I need to have that thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and maybe golf was that for a, a moment. But maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just something you enjoyed, and and um, and I think it's really good to be able to kind of recognize that and go. You know, I I don't know. I don't know if I need to be so gung ho over this one thing. Um, I don't need to be the the. I mean, to pick on my friend David, um, I don't need to be the whale person. <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. I'm not that. I'm not the whale person. David's the whale person. And that's cool that that gets them out of bed in the morning, but I don't need to be that, or I don't need to be the, the car person or the basketball person or whatever. Um, and I think that's a good thing, to, a good kind of place to be. I just enjoy, mm -hmm. I feel like this is what you're kind of saying, you could just, I just enjoy doing things. I just enjoy life. and um, Hopefully I'm enjoying what I'm doing at the time. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. What's, and I don't, I can't recall anything that I've done lately that I've endured mm. maybe shelling fava beans but <laughs> other than that but that was <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it was a fun time yeah yeah. Yes. yeah none of us knew what we were getting into but it was fun why what did you have to shell fava beans for I don't know if this. Is, I mean, it's not probably an important part for the for the podcast. Oh, I'm just I'm just interested. Curiosity. Did you miss the fava bean? I did. Oh, the garden has exploded with fava beans. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I forget oh. who brought them in. Somebody. I don't know whether Diana brought them in or well, let's plant fava beans. You had to get them ready. Yeah, it's the prep phase of them, and we're not oh. sure. And you know. No guidance, just we need fava bean processes. So I know Tacey and I both looked up on the internet, and you got to do this and that, and they don't shell easily. They're they're like a big monkey pod if you've been to Hawaii. Those wow. long, and you don't just crack the pod. So it was. Do you have to boil them. Oh, uh, eventually, but first you got to get them out of the shell, uh -huh. huh. and then you collect them, and then they have to be processed in hot water cooled off and then they have a a protective membrane if you've ever seen like canned garbanzo beans mm -hmm. have a thin skin on yeah, them yeah that you can kind of rub off yeah you yeah. can kind of rub off if you think it's important uh, -huh. uh fava beans oh it's a thick skin so literally you have to take like your fingernail my fingernail was sore for a couple of days because oh uh, you have to yeah. kind of get the end off of one and then you can squeeze it out but oh. it's like a it's it's a pretty significant membrane oh, wow 
So you're thinking you have some fava pods that might have anywhere from three to five beans in it. Uh -huh. And we've done probably two huge Costco boxes deep with wow. fava beans. So we processed a lot of fava beans <laughs> and um, it was, it really was a lot of work. Yeah. It really was. And jokingly, when I came to the garden that afternoon, I kind of unloaded on David. Yeah. And they later apologized. It was just me being silly. Oh, was, Let's so talk about fava beans. <laughs> um, yeah, it's That's it, so it, great. Yeah. It was Talk about a labor of love. It's like yeah. no one's going to ask about how are those fava beans doing, but now we will. Now we can we will. Yeah. Yeah. So I hear you're an Thank expert in you. fava beans. Yeah. Yes, they're also called broad beans. They're a very good source of protein. Okay. Um, and my girlfriend, she's a master gardener, said the even the roots, if you pull the roots out, you'll see they have these little, I don't know, thingy dingies on them, and they're, they're nitrogen rich, and they really enrich the soil. Huh. So it's a good thing. She said, grind up all the pods. Well, there's no way we were going to grind up all the pods, but they got composted, so oh, eventually yeah. that nitrogen will, we'll, we'll make or whatever way. it is, yeah. it'll go back into huh. the soil. Okay. And, and there's still, because I wrote something on the Facebook page, and I said, oh, and there's still more to process, so I don't know what they're going to do with them. But wow. Well, I wondered if you could get them to the KCR with the outer membrane still intact, that would save reduce, time. that would save yeah. quite a bit yeah. of time if we could do that. Yeah. And then instruct the recipients of how to get it off and to find out, because they requested fava beans. Interesting. Were yeah. they a success this time? And yeah. how long do they last yeah. once you pop them out of that membrane? Yeah. I don't That's know. That's a good question. You're going to be the master. I don't you know. You and Tacey. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, <laughs> Yes, yeah. Master Gardener Google. Yeah, yes. Uh, anyway, that that's was the cool. fava beans. Well, and you story. have gotten more involved. Like, with, I mean, you're pretty faithful out there with the community garden, aren't yeah. you? I've only been out a few times this year just because of travel schedules and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I like being out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's I find myself getting tired. And they know. They know yeah. I have limits. But... I was the raspberry girl the other day. Those things are like, they're horrible. I really? mean, it's, oh, yeah, they're deep, and the raspberries, and you see them. And the bees and I were, oh, you know, I realized quarreling. the bees were all at the top where the new stuff was. I was going for the raspberries, which are down below, so I just jumped right in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. Never had a problem. Oh, I was good. surprised. Nice. But they're hard to get at. Very okay. hard to get at, so hmm. yes, but they're hmm. good. Well, you've said a couple times, like, gosh, I just got to tell myself to get out there. Oh, yes. Yeah. But you are doing so much. So like like we've said, yeah. I know you're not alone in that feeling. And sometimes when I when I felt that too, like I, oh, I'm just feeling motivated, but I got to do it. You got to get out. Like what is it that, that drives you to do that? Because hmm. you are... If people weren't having this in-depth conversation with you, at first glance, you are very social and involved and kind and, oh. you know, able able to usher people in, like, to community yeah. and enter into community. So for you, is it, I mean, what is it that is the driving force that you're like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make sure that I'm doing this every day, getting out in some capacity? Or I don't know. Because um, I think, through Ernie's work, through the military, and I guess through nursing, I find myself interested in people. Mm. So you just learn to ask questions and, and try and bring things out about them. But if somebody would start to ask me, I don't know whether I'm hard on myself, but I just mm. feel like kind of terminally boring. Um, and I know I'm not, but yeah. it's, I guess it's, your own self-image and totally. what can you contribute. I yeah. mean, there's there's times even in, in church and fellowship, I feel alone. Hmm. There's times I just, I feel alone here. Hmm. And it can only really be, I guess, from your own, from your own perspective, because I know I'm not. Hmm. So I don't know whether it's I'm hard on myself or what, but... This is this is the best place to be. And there's times I've told people, I said, you know, I really didn't want to come, but 
I realized what better place to be. Yeah. This is where I need to be, especially when you don't want to be anywhere. That isn't, mm. That's so true. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it feels like the same with prayer, too. Like, well, gosh, you don't want to pray, then therefore... Then I you probably s- should, yeah. Yeah, or somebody yeah. else should be for you. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And yeah. bell choir and... Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. VBS and... Oh, that was my first time. Yeah, that was... Actually, I did... No, a, you did it in 2019. I did a little bit. Yeah. Um, I was just... Because I didn't know ahead and I didn't right. block the whole week off. Yeah. Um, but in fact, when I was talking to Danny, I wanted to say, do you have the dates? So oh, I can, yeah. 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 So even, and even after that first, um, week there, I thought, well, maybe I could teach. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or do I want to continue to be the leader or, mm-hmm. yeah. So there's so many different yeah. roles and tasks. I mean, she knows that I'm not that comfortable with kids because never had them. So that's why I think she put me as the the mother duck, you know, moving yeah. from point A to point B. Yeah. And I found if I wasn't the enforcer enough, like Kathy would step in or somebody else would step in. I thought, oh, yeah, that's what I should do. <laughs> they were drawn to you. Yeah, you did great. Yeah, it was yeah. A, yeah. 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 No, it was, it was yeah, I, I, I think... Um, one of my first memories of you, I think the first time I met you, really, it was 2019. Yeah. I'd only been here for a month. Wow. And, yeah. um, which feels like it was so long ago. Um, but, uh, I think you came up to me and you, and you just said that you feel like you don't know how to do this and you wanted help. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but like just seeing you on, you know, two weeks ago, yeah, I was like, oh, gee. I mean, I think you probably it probably is one of those things where you probably are harder on yourself than it. Oh yeah. Than oh, it, yes. I was like, oh no, no you're you you're you're you got you're good at this. Yeah. yeah. And I, and the kids liked you, and and that was very evident seeing your group and. Oh yeah. Um and yeah so. They they affirmation there, but. They were fun. Yeah. They were very fun. Um. The prayer, you know, the deacons and the elders praying for people after service. Yeah. I would like to do that because I, I would like to do that. Yeah. But I was supposed to meet with Tyler, and then I booked it at the same time that I have my neighborhood Bible study with Kathy Kettenring. Oh, nice. Okay. So I had to cancel, and I thought, Kathy, just go in there and be yourself. Because hmm. long time ago, I don't know, maybe when I was an elder active on session, never again, um... I remember we would do prayers and things from the from the pulpit, and I would frequently get comments from people because they were just basic, down to earth, mm-hmm. you know, and it was reaffirming that it was good. Mm-hmm. Just get in there and be yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just get in there, and I did. I've done some reaching out, which is. Phone calls are hard. Oh, yeah. 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 I've reached out um, to one on the, the prayer chain, uh, Bonnie Tonneson, that I had, you know, connected with about her daughter, Sharon. And I called her and I talked to her on the phone mm-hmm. and talked to David on the phone. And a Mahjong friend had some issues and I said, I will be praying for you. Mm-hmm. And that just touched her so much. Yeah. So I called her, called The other day at worship, last Sunday, I looked at Peggy Templeton and I thought, I'm going to give her a day. Hmm. And I told her about it. I said, I'll call you and I just want to respite you for a day or whatever. Hmm. So I'm waiting to hear back from her. But just to make those phone calls. Oh, that's huge. It's very big. And I can look back on it and say, thank you. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. Thank you because oh, you yeah. felt like, I mean, oh, God, God was moving. Oh you. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the other, the other thing that I've really, really turned around, which I thank him for every time I recognize it, which is many times during the day, I've cleaned up my mouth. Mm. Oh yeah. Now I still say the word. <laughs> told a friend once, I go into Bible study, mummy. She goes. Bible study fellowship. She goes, 
oh, Kathleen, does that mean you'll never say shit on the golf course? I said, oh, <laughs> mommy, oh, I wasn't sure. But, oh, I mommy. mean, I wasn't like a sailor, but I was enough that it was embarrassing myself. Mm. And I knew the words were inappropriate. Hmm. And we've been working together. And mm. it just, it's amazing how easy and convicting it was. Yeah. And it really wasn't hard, and it hasn't been hard. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're like one of those crazy drivers that has a Jesus bumper sticker and <laughs> does something crazy on the road. So yeah. I thought, well, here I am with my... No. Anyway, that's... Yeah. What's... Well, it's some good things. Yeah. You're, like, almost describing what has been the... I mean, for a long time, the, the idea of what sanctification actually is in the life of a Christian is... It's not mm-hmm. like... This process. It's, yeah, it's not the thing where you're going upwards and you're going to reach this pinnacle and of perfection. I mean, there are some that believe that. I don't. Um, but, but yeah, it's this. You it, said it's this process of God constantly working on your heart and um, things that maybe weren't a strength for you 25 years ago mm-hmm. or two years ago. He's given you the the power or the ability to do that. Now he's his, the spirit has worked on your heart to be able to make those phone calls that maybe you wouldn't have made, mm-hmm. or maybe you felt comfortable making, or mm-hmm. uh, to to feel more like, oh yeah, I should pray more. That's the spirit working in my life, you know, or um, oh yeah, maybe I should yeah maybe I should watch my my tongue a little bit more. That's oh, yeah. the spirit, you know, like okay. it's all they're all good thing, you know, but but you never reach that point where you're. Or you're at perfection. No, yeah. Um, and then even there though you, is no perfection in no. our human being. Yeah, and so it's a, it's a it, you're basically you're just you're basically describing that's what life that's what the Christian life kind of looks like is this this yeah I can't even better here oh and then maybe I f- figure that out and now well what about this and mm-hmm. um, and yeah. I feel like it's so comforting you know you sharing this like, totally it's not. You know, we didn't say Kathy come in and have a confessional with us. Yeah, exactly. You know, but it's just. It, it's like, it's disarming, I feel like, in the sense that we don't need to come to a space knowing we're all Christians and we all attend yeah. the same church. We don't need to come to this space and recognize, like, yeah, I pray, I do this and that. Like, we obviously, we know there's no perfection that we will attain, but to also be able to talk about our shortcomings freely. Mm-hmm. And then I know that we'll all deal with our own personal shame, and hopefully that's not something that's going to hold us up from pursuing, right. you know, this good walk too. But it's like to talk to talk about it and mm-hmm. to still be able to face each other and grow with each other, I think is huge. Like, yeah. so I, I appreciate you being able to just share all that openly because it is, that is part of the faith walk. I mean, mm-hmm. this constant, it's like accountability can take shape, but more than that, it's just, it's just the truth of, of who we are and mm-hmm. not, and not oh. trying to sidestep so that we can let this polished individual shine instead of this uh, and hide this individual in the corner. Like this is all of who we are. And, and yeah. yet we still acknowledge that God is is able to, like, use you, use us as vessels in mm-hmm. that way. And it's, and yeah, I just admire so much that you still, we hear we hear so much right now in this conversation, the voice of, you know, that inadequacy where you're like, no, you can't, no, you can't. And yet, no, I should be challenged to do this. I'm going to pray. I'm going to call this person. Yeah. And so how yeah. much stronger then is God through all of it? And it's, mm-hmm. it's so powerful, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering is, and that's one thing I think on many levels of what, as a deacon, Mm -hmm. we, my little group, or I can do. And we are in the same group for those listening. To enhance the role of the committee, which currently is called the Grief Committee, which, you know, I'd really like to find another name, Mm -hmm. another... And maybe there is no better word, but I just keep searching. And I was thinking, just moving in my heart to reach out, to give some respite to one person. And and then I think of, of the one we talked about whose husband is in a wheelchair at home. I mean, mm-hmm. how many people within our family here could use a time away Mm-hmm. For a couple hours or something that maybe we could provide or mm-hmm. I don't know. So I think that's one thing I want to do within my time as a deacon and mm-hmm. see what we can do. We all, I think, want to is yeah. expand. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about God's nudging. And it's not, mm-hmm. it's it's forming into something. 
but there's nothing like, you know, we don't have the name or we don't have yeah, the, yeah. the dates, but, but, we can but you're nudged and you are acting. Yes. Yeah. One thing I really feel bad about is I have not reached out to Sherry. I, I really didn't know what she was going through, but I know when I finally pick up the phone and say, I've been thinking about you, mm -hmm. she'll be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not going to judge me and say, mm -hmm. oh, you didn't call. But I will. Mm -hmm. So you've known for a long time. You want to call yeah. and just offer your heart. Yeah. And I was wondering about even for the, the people that we do pray for in deacons. For the rest of the church. Well, even just for those people to maybe do a little follow-up or do a little update, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Bonnie and David and, and her daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, you know, is that something that could be part of our, our role, mm -hmm. you know, is to follow up. And I had started, I think, for one or two months, I was sending cards to the people we prayed for and let them know, well... I was going to do that again, but apparently Margaret or somebody said, that's a good idea. Mm. So they've now given that to one of the card people mm. so that every month those who we've prayed for get sent a card, a thinking of you card, telling them mm. that, you know, we've that's done nice. this. So it's yeah. very nice. Yeah. Yeah. It really is very nice. So. Yeah. Yeah. When did you guys get connected with this church? Oh, Ernie. 1980. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, literally, yes, I guess it was 80. Um, our neighbors in Hawaii were Helen and Jerry Reef, which some people, well, there's quite a few people in this congregation, John Haberlin for one, Pam, mm -hmm. know them. He was a Presbyterian, ordained Presbyterian yeah. pastor. Okay. He was a Navy guy. Mm -hmm. um, but they were our neighbors in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and she was a wonderful wonderful little pudgy hugger <laughs> and they moved up here okay. and we came back here mm -hmm. and we really didn't you know attend any churches out in Hawaii once when I first went out there I think it was in I don't know 77 or 85 Ernie wasn't there yet I think it might have been 85 because I had come from here out to there and I went to a very large Presbyterian mm -hmm. church hmm. um, probably the largest on the island and went as a visitor and you know that was in the days and we used to do it here too visitors if you wanted to stand up and introduce yourself mm -hmm. nobody ever came up to me afterwards I thought whoop that's it for this church <laughs> Dang. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And we went to another church when we were doing uh, something when I was an elder. We went to, the, a group of us went down to another church in somewhere in Tacoma area. Mm -hmm. And we wore our central kits up. Bed. Nobody came up to us. Oh. Ernie and I went to a, another Presbyterian church in Fresno once for an Easter service. Nobody came up to us. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't happen here. No. Just striking no. out. Yeah. 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 But it was amazing. Mm. I thought, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, we do have a church that, I mean, where new people are recognized almost immediately. Yes. <laughs> but but we have a peop we have a group of people that I think are just get so excited about that, and um, want to make them feel like they're a part of the family already. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I think we need to be yeah. careful. We don't need to. Yeah, there are some people that might. That, that might yeah. They they actually might want to privacy. Might, the the idea of coming in and kind of not being seen mm. yet yeah. is nice for I think some couples or some just individuals. Mm -hmm. But um. But still, I mean, you can't. You know, it's one of those things where, when we were doing our new members class, I think I've mentioned this a number of times now on the podcast. Mm -hmm. But um, so many people that were becoming new members were like, I just. Um, you could tell that people really loved each other here or mm -hmm. people really were excited to get to yeah. know each other and meet meet each other. And so, um, yeah, we, 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 it is a unique kind it of... It is. It is. But I think even as, to me, somebody who tries to go up to a new face or whatever and, mm -hmm. um, you know, read the person, mm -hmm. 
because again, I ask questions. I like to learn about you. Determine who's comfortable with that and who just, you know, what well, can I help you? This is where we do this and yeah. this is where we do yeah. that. We had one young guy that came in when I was one of the greeters at the door and we showed him where it was and then he came out and asked where the restroom was and he never came back. Mm -hmm. And somebody said he probably was looking for the church next door. Because oh, okay. we've heard of people who went to the church next door mm -hmm. and recognized that they're in the wrong place. Yeah. I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, so that yeah. was the answer. It's like, I yeah. bet they, they bet he was <laughs> going on with the church next door. Mm -hmm. And that happens. Yeah. 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 So 1980, you guys. Oh, we came here in 1980. Here. And then. And we did a lot. Yeah. I think that. Oh, gosh. Yes. What was her name? <sighs> he. Hertzke, Mary Hertzke, roped me in to running the Christmas Bazaar kitchen. Okay. Here. Yes. Yes. What's that entail? Is oh, that boy. It was fun. Mm -hmm. The Christmas Bazaar here was a lot of fun. Hmm. Um, but I came in and, you know, jumped right in and helped in the kitchen. And guess what? Guess who got to do it next year? Um, you already experienced. I, well, yeah, I did. Uh, Mary, it's I didn't know that the fava beans again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Clarenbach, he did a soup. So we had a bazaar here, and we served from the kitchen. And I remember Betty Brownlee had beautiful items in there. Mm. And it really, it was very, very nice. It was all handmade items. The first night was Thursday night, and that was open to the congregation only. Mm. Um, and then Friday and Saturday, it was open to the public. Mm. So we would serve, Don Clarenbach made this Italian sausage soup um, that was a big hit, and he'd always made the soups. And... Uh, Pies, we had pies. Valcatel, if it had eggs and stuff in it, you had to bake it at the church. And Valcatel was famous for her lemon meringue pies. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking, yeah. That that must have been in 80. Yeah, that was in 1980. Wow. Um, but it was a fun thing. And then it started getting, I don't know whether, again, everything blurs together. It just, it got more that they opened it up to more community people to be vendors, cool. and yeah, it, it went downhill, oh, it, and it was a lot of work. Yeah, I can imagine. It was yeah. a lot of work, so we yeah. ceased and desisted in <laughs> having the, the bizarre, Christmas Bazaar. I don't know when the last time was that we mm. did it, but it was fun mm -hmm. while it went. Mm -hmm. It was very fun, but I'll never forget her, all of a sudden... <laughs> You're running the kitchen. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> I love that you're listing all these names and a lot I have just not heard. Yeah. But I'm oh, sure I the listeners, like, yeah. you yeah. know, that'll oh, yeah. bring up some vibrant memories. Oh, for them. yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Hmm. Yeah. In fact, some people have returned that were here long ago. That's nice. Yeah, I forget her hmm. first name. I think her first name is the same as mine. Hmm. I know it is. Yeah, she was here. I think she might have even met when they were in the school building or something. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So many changes yeah. over the years. Yeah, it's yeah, it's cool to kind of see that history of uh -huh. of the place and to meet all these people that were here so early and Yeah. Um, or either like you said moved or moved come and, yeah, back. Right. Or, yeah. yeah. And I do appreciate too where there's just I don't get the sense of territorialism that mm -hmm. much at all. So it's just like mm -hmm. this building, you could still appreciate it as it is now and as it was and oh, yeah. where it's going. And yeah, but when, yet you've still walked these halls for many years. When we were first here, I know we worshiped in Fellowship Hall. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know when the new sanctuary was built. Um, you probably heard that from John, huh, Ty? Yeah, I can't remember. That's 80, so funny. 87. 87. Or 84. So there's three dates. We can correct those later on. 1977 is the first, is when the church is established. Right. 
1984 is the building. 1987 is the sanctuary, I think. I think. I don't know. Good job. Yeah, it's... Um, when I was growing up, I went to a congregational church. Okay. And Mom just... She always made sure that we went to church. But I really... I know I did church. I did Sunday school. I was in the children's choir. Um, we got to worship in the original little chapel that was built. Chandler... Yeah, these people like gave the property to our pastor, Walter Staves, and it had their old home, hmm. two-story, beautiful outdoor flagstone fireplace, hmm. swimming pool, and then we eventually built, they must have first built the chapel, and then they built the big one next door, um, but I don't remember having feelings in my heart. It was, was something more that you just did. Mm. Mm. You went to church. Yeah. The you sang in the choir. The connection or like the feeling? It was a social connectedness. But the feelings in your heart? Yeah. yeah for, for Christ. For Christ, yeah. 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 It just don't remember it being there. Mm. And I remember once saying something to Jerry about, you know, social place. And he was like, you know, Church is more than just a social place. I can't remember his words, mm -hmm. but he always had very wise words. He was so wonderful. He was the dad that Ernie, he was kind of the dad that Ernie's dad died when he was six. So mm -hmm. he never really had a father image. And Jerry was that person. Mm -hmm. And Helen was the woman who loved me no matter what. Mm. And my mother was a little conditional, and mm. you know, it, it's just the way it was. But yeah. Helen she didn't care, she loved you, and you mm. knew she loved you. Mm. Yeah, mm. um, so I went to church all the way through high school, and then college. Well, I went to Catholic services because I went to a Catholic school, okay, played my guitar at the folk masses, mm. Mm -hmm. okay. and uh. Then we got married in, so once I quit nursing school, I really didn't go to church, you know, my few years there on my own. And then when Ernie and I married, we were married in the military. Uh, yeah, and then we really didn't worship much. And out in Hawaii, we'd go randomly. So it really wasn't until we got back here mm -hmm. that it was a regular type of event. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were here, 1885, we did things, we did mariners, we did all sorts of different things. We mm. can't remember when we joined, but then when we came back. So yeah. that was kind of my Christian upbringing. And I remember going to different things. And the first time, you know, they said, can you pray for the group? I think I was in tears. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Praying aloud is always a big, it's like a, it's a milestone, I feel like, yeah, in Christian it's... faith. and. Some people make it seem so effortless, but you know at some point, you know, you just got to get out and do it, and it feels, yeah. yes. there's a level of discomfort, and I suppose that should be there, because you're praying on behalf of other people's lives, and... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and you think you have to say just the right words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do. I mean, you use the word sanctification. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could tell you. Mm -hmm. Really, those are the words yeah. that... Yeah. yeah. I need the easy reading version. Yeah. You know, the Bible, Christianity for dummies. <laughs> no, and, well, and no, I suppose not, yeah. that's why we have our teachers and our elders yeah. and our pastors, yeah. because yep. we aren't, yeah, we, unless that is an avenue that we want to pursue, we're not expected to have the terminology. Yeah, and, right. And yet we still make up the body. And so therefore, oh, yeah. But I totally hear you, because it's like yeah. sometimes you look at the glossary of terms and you're like, ah, oh, overwhelmed. yeah. But, yep. I think it's just so important to be able to ask and like you yes. you ask like what is that how can how yeah. can I do better in this area because if we don't and we're all just like prancing around like we know things when we don't I feel like what is that going to produce that's yeah. just like a false what is this <laughs> like, yeah so yeah the terms can be scary though I agree but yeah. I think I don't know. I just, I do just admire, like, just being able to be mm -hmm. before people and to just, like, want to pray with them, like mm -hmm. you're talking and, 
and learn alongside them without being frightened by the, what did John Haberlin's class? It was once called learning Christianese or, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. without oh, yeah. being concerned about learning. Yep. Top the, Bible ease. Yeah. 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 Or that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a, yeah. I mean, and I think a lot of people, unfortunately, have been taught that like prayer out loud prayer is almost it almost it, it seems comes comes in a way that people pray as if they're not praying to God but they're praying for everybody else mm-hmm. praying for everybody else to think like that was a good scripted prayer. Yeah, yeah well I mean even if it's it's just like oh yeah I like that prayer that was a good prayer when it wasn't actually f- to God and that was something that I got I got roped into really early because I was around a bunch of people that have been Christians forever and I was like I need to make sure these people in my ministry that I'm working with think that I, that I mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about. And so I would pray prayers that I, that that would be accepted. That I thought would be good. Like yeah. they, that they would think that was a good prayer. And then eventually, and then once I think somebody told me like, Hey, you know, you can just, it's okay if you say ums and ahs and justs and mm-hmm. you kind of just, you wander and you're out loud. That's allowed. Cause you're not, cause you're praying to God, not to everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, there was one time some people showed up late to a meeting and we had prayed and I had just finished praying and they're like, sorry, we missed the prayer. And I go, oh, that's okay. I wasn't praying to you, mm-hmm. you know, and they didn't know I was joking. I was, but they, yeah, they were like, oh, and I was like, but they're like, no, I, it's, I'm really, supposed to relieve you from yeah, being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, God's the one that's hearing the prayers, you know, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it, but it can be because of that it can be daunting. Oh, I don't, what if I say the wrong thing? What if mm-hmm. I say the wrong words? Mm-hmm. But the beautiful thing is that we have Christ as our perfect intercessor um, mm-hmm. to be able to turn all of our bad, messy, jumbled words into the, the exact prayer that is supposed to be heard oh, yeah. by the Father. And, or our heartache, or yeah. our sorrow, or, right. oh, Jesus, help me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything like that, he knows. Yeah. He knows exactly. what's going on. Yeah. Eldering was very difficult for me. Yeah. Why I stuck around for six years, it was very, very hard. I mm. said, I just want to bake cookies and have everybody get along. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sing kumbaya. Yeah. You know, it was, and it was a tumultuous period in the Presbyterian church. Mm. It was a tumultuous period in our church. Mm. Um, hmm. Yeah, it was... Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, those are hard, especially if you're not. I mean, you you definitely have a deacon's heart. Yes, and much can, more yeah. so than an elder. Yeah, this servant kind of. You just yeah, you want to be there for people. Want to be there in the kitchen washing dishes. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a yeah. Yeah, I'd rather be in the kitchen washing dishes. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, if there was something, this is how we've ended all our podcasts. If there was something that if somebody wanted to come up to you and talk, start talking, start a conversation in the narthex. What's a what's a way maybe you would encourage them to start that conversation? Is there a topic that they should bring up to you or? Hi, yeah, I'm okay. so and so. I haven't met you before, but I saw your yeah, yeah. Just come up. You don't even have to bring a topic. Hmm. Just come say up. I want to meet you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I heard your story, and I'd really like to meet you. Yeah, that would be the simplest 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 way Mm -hmm. is just come from the heart yeah yeah that's good one heart to the other recognizes that oh yeah Yeah. oh yeah yeah Yeah. oh thanks kathy thank Thank you you for missing out on oh mahjong also we know it's a joke i survived yeah Yeah, i survived (laughs)